morning in festive road. Coal was being delivered and boys were playing with wooden swords. Everything was very ordinary. This is an ordinary street. At number 52 the postman arrived with a letter. Number 52 is Mr. Ben's house and Mr. Ben was at the front door to meet the postman. The letter was an invitation to a fancy dress party. Mr. Ben wasn't really very fond of parties, but he did like fancy dress. He put on his hat and coat and set out to search the shops for something special to wear. He tried the big shops didn't find anything. He tried the not so big shops. Still he didn't find anything. He tried the small shops in the side streets. Everywhere it was the same story. No fancy dress, only ordinary everyday clothes. But at last, in a back lane, he found a little shop with all sorts of interesting things to wear. In the window was a suit of bright red armour. Mr. Ben went into the shop. As if by magic, the shopkeeper appeared. Can I help you, sir? he asked. After looking quickly round the shop, Mr. Ben said, I wonder if I might borrow that suit of red armour. The man seemed pleased. Of course, he said. Would you like to see if it fits? And he pointed to the door of the fitting room. Mr. Ben carried the armour through the door and found he was in a small room. Quickly, he changed into the armour. He smiled at the red knight reflected in the mirror. He laughed. Then he noticed another door. Well, said Mr. Ben, and he walked through the second doorway. Instead of another room, Mr. Ben found himself in rocky countryside. From behind a large pile of rocks, he could see smoke rising. Feeling brave in his red armour, he walked over to see what was making the smoke. He climbed the rocks and found the smoke was coming from a dragon, quite a large dragon. Gosh, thought Mr. Ben, somebody else in fancy dress, and he called down. Hello, that's a good outfit. How do you make the smoke? The dragon looked up. You can't fool me, he said. I know you've been sent to kill me. Kill him, thought Mr. Ben. And he realised that it was a real dragon. A sad, very sad dragon. Before long, Mr. Ben was sitting down with the dragon, and the dragon told Mr. Ben his story. The dragon had lived happily in a castle, 
He worked hard, lighting fires for all the people who lived nearby. Everybody loved him, especially the king. One day, a man came to the castle with a new idea for lighting fires, which he called a match. Nobody wanted matches. They had a dragon to light their fires. But the matchmaker was cunning. He set fire to a barn or two and saw that the dragon got the blame. He caused so much trouble that the poor dragon was made to leave the castle. Then everybody had to go to the matchmaker and buy matches. To make matters worse, the king's favourite white horse had run away at the same time and the dragon had been blamed for this as well. He was being blamed for everything. The dragon pointed to the horse which stood nearby. I've been looking after him, said the dragon, but I'm much too afraid to return him. I'll help you, said Mr Ben. Show me where the castle is and I'll tell the king the true story. The dragon was delighted, and they left almost at once. After they'd walked quite a way, the dragon stopped. There in the distance, Mr. Ben could see the castle. The dragon was afraid to go any closer. Um, I'll wait here under the trees until you return, he said. Mr. Ben said, goodbye, and rode off towards the castle. At the castle, the guard saw Mr. Ben approaching. They rushed to the king and told him that a brave red knight must have killed the dragon because he was returning the white horse. Mr. Ben arrived at the castle. He didn't have to say anything. He was taken straight to the king to be rewarded. <laughs> King listened while Mr. Ben told him the dragon's story. The king had missed the dragon and was delighted to hear the truth. Nobody liked the nasty matchmaker. He was making his matches more and more expensive because he knew that people had to have them. The matchmaker was brought to the king. The king ordered him to prison until he thought how to punish the rascal. The guards took him to the deepest, darkest dungeon. Mr. Ben led the way for the king and his guard to welcome the dragon back. They stopped before they reached the dragon's hiding place in case they frightened the dragon. The king and the red knight walked to the trees. The king told the dragon how sorry he was for all the dragon's troubles and how happy he was to see him again. The dragon was so happy that he made Mr. Ben and the king ride on his back. With the dragon leading the way, and the guard following, they returned to the castle.
Everybody came to the castle to welcome the dragon back, and the king made a speech. He explained how the matchmaker had caused all the trouble, not the dragon. He said that matches were better for most people, and that everyone could have the matches they needed free. The matchmaker would make the matches for nothing as his punishment. The dragon would be the king's personal firelighter. Then the king said they would have a feast, and the red knight would be the guest of honour. Everybody started to get things ready for the feast. Mr. Ben just stood at the side and watched. A man appeared nearby. And Mr. Ben wondered where he'd seen him before. Would you like to change for the feast, sir? The man asked. And he took Mr. Ben to a nearby door. You'll find the other clothes inside, sir, he said. As he stepped through the door, Mr. Ben found he was back in the changing room of the shop. He took a last look at the Red Knight in the mirror, and he changed into his own clothes again. Then he went back into the shop. Mr. Ben had had enough excitement. He didn't want to go to the fancy dress party now. Thank you, he said to the shopkeeper as he gave back the armour. I won't take it with me after all. The little man smiled. Right you are, sir. Shall we be seeing you again? Oh, yes, I'll be back, said Mr. Ben from the door. Very soon, he added. As he walked back down Festive Road, Mr. Ben thought about his adventure. When he went to get his front door key out, he found an unusual box of matches in his pocket. He smiled at the picture on the box. How nice, he thought. I'll keep them carefully, just to remind me. Thank you.